Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. And ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> you know why the excitement, of course. Yeah. It is Super Tuesday, the biggest single day on the presidential primary calendar. So let's dive right into the story that will impact our nation for generations to come. A Chilean TV broadcast cut <laughs> beer ads into Star Wars. That's right. The internet today is a buzz. That just moments ago, in 2003, a television broadcast in Chile played this actual footage, which 21 years later has now gone viral. I understand you've become quite a good pilot yourself. And he was a good friend. Which reminds me, I have something here for you. Your father wanted you to have this when you were old enough. Now, it was subtle, <laughs> but you may have noticed a tasteful product placement for the Chilean beer, Cerveza Cristal. I'm sorry, I mispronounced that. Cerveza Cristal! <laughs> and that's not all. They also edited ads into a scene where Luke finds Cerveza Cristal <laughs> in the Dagobah system, and into this scene with the Emperor. It is pointless to resist, my son. And of course, the devastating moment at the end of Empire Strikes Back when Darth Vader reveals, Luke, I am your logger. It is completely insane that they only did this with Star Wars, because the smooth drinking taste of Cerveza Cristal fits seamlessly into any classic movie. Cerveza Cristal! Cerveza Cristal! Cerveza Cristal! You had my suit. And you have my brother. And my... Cerveza Cristal! Cerveza Cristal! Cerveza Cristal! But you can all rest assured, here at The Late Show, we will never stoop to that kind of blatant product placement. Isn't that right, Lewis? That's right, Steve. Cerveza Cristal! Cerveza Cristal! Now, as I believe I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, today is Super Tuesday, or as they call it in Chile, Cinco de Marcho. <laughs> it's the biggest day of the U.S. presidential primaries, with voters heading to the polls in Alabama, California, Colorado, Oklahoma, Utah, North Carolina, Tennessee, Maine, Arkansas, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Alaska, Texas, Vermont, Virginia, and American Samoa. And if you need a way to remember all the Super Tuesday states, just use the helpful mnemonic, Account Mama TV Vas. <laughs> now, with a Biden-Trump rematch looking inevitable at this point, cable news has been struggling to generate Super Tuesday excitement this year. Check out CNN, who sent John Berman out to cover all the hot action at a mail ballot drop box. The polls are open in Castle Rock, Colorado, in a manner of speaking. That's because, in essence, the polls are always open in Colorado. <laughs> the major means of voting here is by mail or by drop box. You can see the drop box right there behind me. Voter ballot drop box, it says, which is a sign that it is a drop box. <laughs> Thank you, John. That clears up a lot of confusion. <laughs> At least that's what it says in my teleprompter here, which is a sign that it clears up a lot of confusion. <laughs> now, there's one thing that could still drive voter turnout today, and that's that Taylor Swift told her 282 million Instagram followers to vote in Super Tuesday's primaries, but refrained from endorsing any specific candidates or political party. We haven't seen a celebrity take a stance this boldly neutral. <laughs> since Rob Lowe went to an NFL game with a hat that said, NFL. <laughs> he was just rooting for the contract, right? 
Anyway, spoiler, it's Biden-Trump. It's always been Biden-Trump. It will always be Biden-Trump. <laughs> but not if you ask the voters who seem to still be in denial. In a recent poll, almost 50% of respondents said they believe it is likely Democrats will replace Biden with another candidate before the election. No! No, they won't. <laughs> it's Trump versus Biden. Stop making up election fanfic. <laughs> Ooh, what if Tom Brady comes out of retirement and runs for president? He could make Gronk secretary of Gronking. <laughs> and then they kiss. <laughs> this speculation has gotten so out of hand that today, former First Lady Michelle Obama's office had to formally announce that she will not be running for president <laughs> in 2024. Which means she's running! <laughs> Me thinks she doth protest. I, for one, hope she picks Gronk as her running mate. <laughs> but it is gonna be Joe Biden. Not only that, Joe is saying it's no more Mr. Nice Joe. He's unveiling a new strategy, go for Trump's jugular. You get him, Joe! Yeah, go for the jugular. Just, just one, one problem with that plan. Good luck finding a jugular in that chin scrotum. <laughs> now, advisors, advisors say that Biden is convinced he'll rattle Trump if he taunts him daily, which will cause Trump to go haywire in public. Yes, he'll go crazy, as opposed to his current rational public message. <laughs> Me likey mine comp, bing, 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 bang, Russia. Oh. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The White House also believes an aggressive strategy will dampen concerns about Biden's age by showing that at 81, he can still throw a Scranton punch. That's right. <laughs> Come on, Jack. Here comes the old Pennsylvania Haymaker Express. Hold on. Brace yourself. Here we go. Here we go. There you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now, hold still. Don't move. Hold still. Here it comes. Here it comes. Hold on. Right there. Come back here. Come back here, buddy. But the president is not out there fighting alone. Oh, no. He is backed by Joe Biden superfans, many of them older, and most of them women. That's right. Taylor's got the Swifties, Beyonce's got the Beehive, but Joe's got the early bird special. <laughs> I will have the scrod. But not all Joe boosters are older. One 28-year-old told reporters he loves Biden, quote, and I feel like I'm the only one. Does anybody care that I exist? <laughs> You're not the only one that feels that way. In fact, it's Nikki Haley's campaign slogan. <laughs> Ooh, um... Speaking of Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, yesterday she spoke to supporters in Texas and took a victory lap for being the last woman standing. This has been a whirlwind. Yeah, I announced probably just over a year ago, we had 14 people in the race. I defeated a dozen of the fellas. I just have one more fella I gotta catch up to. That fella, my Lyft driver, he's taking me back to South Carolina where they do not like me. <laughs> um, oh, there's some rich guy news. You know rich people? Yeah, there's news. According to the uh, Bloomberg Billionaires Index, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos has surpassed Elon Musk as the world's richest person. Congratulations, Jeff. It's the second list you've topped this year after world's most divorced man. <laughs> As of Monday, Monday, Bezos' net worth was $200 billion, while Musk's was $198 billion, and luxury brand CEO Bernard Arnault's net worth was $197 billion. $197 billion? Okay, poorie. <laughs> Embarrassing much? You know what? Don't even bother showing up to this year's Eyes Wide Shut party. <laughs> Nobody wants to spank you in the gazebo. <laughs> Bezos... I just said gazebo and then Bezos. That sounds good. <laughs> Bezos gazebos. <laughs> I bet he's got a gazebo. If I was Bezos, I'd have a gazebo. 
Bezos is not afraid to show off his billions. He's got two mansions and a private island known as Billionaire Bunker and a $500 million super yacht, which features a helicopter landing pad, a swimming pool, and a mermaid resembling his fiance, Lauren Sanchez, at the bow. Sounds a little bit over the top, but that's just how men express their love. That's why on the hood of my car, I have an Evy bobblehead. <laughs> There's, um, yeah. sure. Heavy. Heavy. Okay. Oh, uh, there's some bad news for college kids looking to party because after heightened levels of crime during spring break, Miami Beach has announced that they are breaking up with spring breakers. Oh, that's terrible. And it explains Pitbull's latest track, I'm Sad, parenthesis, clap that booty, featuring Mark Anthony. <laughs> Doesn't matter what emotion you have. Yeah. Clap that booty. Hey, well. <laughs> City residents have had enough of the destructive behavior from visiting college kids with one business owner speaking out. On Ocean Drive, Mango's nightclub owner, David Wallach, has seen it firsthand. Last year, I was in 16 stampedes. 16 stampedes. Well, that's what Miami gets for holding their annual running of the chads. <laughs> Miami's also cracking down on what you're allowed to do on the beach as Miami has prohibited smoking cigarettes, narcotics, and marijuana, large tents, and loud music. No surprise, they've also banned the consumption of alcohol. With one notable exception. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Senator Bernie Sanders, but when we come back, science. <laughs> 